Hey everybody, it's Dale Jr. back again for another episode of the Dale Jr. Download here this Wednesday, the Ally Guest Segment. And coming into the show today is Kyle Petty and Richard Petty. Kyle Petty called me and said, hey, I want to bring my dad on the show. They're celebrating the Petty family 75th anniversary in NASCAR. So this is going to be great to be able to talk to both of them. I'm excited about it. They're out in the, they're out in the lobby right now. Let's bring them in the studio and get going. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. All right, so I said we're back in the Bojangle studio. Another episode of Dell Junior Download. And now through May 5th, you can get your hands on two free bird dogs by using promo code Dale Jr. when you place an order on Bojangles.com or in the app at participating stores. That's the code D-A-L-E-J-R for two free bird dogs with your own line or Bojangles app order. Get them while they're hot. Bird dogs. I love saying that. It's fun. Yeah. Um, anyhow, as I said, Kyle Petty, Richard Petty standing out in the lobby. You don't want to keep the king waiting. But uh, we got to make sure that we say thank you to Ally. Uh, Ally does it right. They do so much for this um, this industry, for NASCAR, for, for Dodum Row Media. They have involvement in a lot of different spaces um, that help this industry in a lot of great ways, and they want to help you. If you're saving, you know, for race tickets, a new car, a new house, whatever, you want to do this with Ally. They're a great partner for us. They could be a great partner for you. And they bring us this guest segment every single week. Um, I said uh, just a moment ago that Kyle Petty called me. Uh, I am eager to see what this is all about, right? They're celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Petty family in NASCAR, and Kyle is taking the lead on this whole um, project. You know, he's he's taking his dad to different places and different areas to um, to talk about this, and he wanted to come on the show. And so, you know, I've talked to Kyle separately and Richard as well on this show before. Never had them in here together. Um, but I got a pretty good idea of what I'd like to ask them, but we'll see what Kyle has up his sleeve. So let's get started. Bring him in the Dale Jr. download. Get him at the table. Does he need to put his phone on silent? Doesn't phone. matter. I'm just kidding. He don't have a phone. <laughs> he, don't have a phone. he don't have a phone. He don't. The the king, Rich Petty, does not have a cell phone. Nope. Don't How do people? Ha, when's the last time you had a cell phone? Okay, the last time they get they give me a phone, uh, probably four, five or six years ago, maybe longer. And uh, so, the first thing I did was call one of my daughters. Didn't answer. Called another. Thing. <laughs> Is this didn't true? Answer. Called and didn't answer because they didn't recognize the number. I just threw the thing out the window. Yeah. I didn't need. I mean, God, if I couldn't I'm so get jealous, you got to call somebody to go find him. I'm you so know jealous. I, mean? yeah. I know. Think about it. Think about it. Think That's about just checking the out. Best way to live. <laughs> yeah. They got they got one now. They put in my truck. Uh, so for, that they know where I'm for at. tracking. It's a tracking device. Oh, it's like shit. a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just put it on the tracker so yeah. Jody knows where he's at if he's on the They got those air tags. Uh, that's what you need. Yeah. yeah. I got I put I bought a fifth wheel and threw an air tag in there so yeah. I could watch it drive, drive across the country, but Yeah. It's kind of nice. They got them for you put them on your dogs and your kids yeah. and, and people yeah. put, put them on suitcases yes. and all that work yes. to keep up with stuff. Right. Yeah. If you're flying over I think that's what it was really designed Damn. for. I think you're right. Yeah. We might, started. I don't know if y'all know I that. Might be air tagged. I might be air tagged. I didn't you know need, that. You might be air tagged. Don't even know it. Don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, not good. That's not <laughs> good. That's not good. All right. So I got Richard and Kyle Petty here for the Dale Jr. Download. And Richard, um, awesome. Always, always awesome to see you, man. Um, you change your room every time you walk into it. You um, and my dad, and there's a couple other people I've met in my life that do that. Everybody, you're so recognizable and such an icon, but you're been around a long your time, son. Right? <laughs> I know your son. I know it says so right here. Yeah, right there, right there. Long time. Yeah, that's just what it says. I look at that number, man, and I, it gives me uh, some hope and confidence that maybe I'll I'll live uh, I'll get to see as much of the, of of the world as you have, you and will. as much of the history. You'll be good. Yeah. So, um, Kyle, you reached out to me and yep. said I want to bring my dad on the show. Um, you got a hat on that says Petty, 75. 75, baby. What's the deal? So this is our 75th, um, you know, for our family. My granddad started, and it's funny, we just left Martinsville and um, with Clay, and, you know, Clay Earl was there, and then, and, and then Clay Campbell. 
But um, so my granddad came to the first race over here in Charlotte. Um, and the, the legend of rolling the car over and not having a ride home and having to bum a ride home, him and Uncle Morris and Grandma and Granddaddy. And uh, that's kind of where it started. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, we were just at Martinsville this last weekend, and he's still there. And, and it's cool. It, it's really cool because you look at my granddad that raced in the – through the 50s and then had his accident in, um, in, in 61 and then my dad and then I come along in the late 70s and Adam, Adam came along in the late 90s. So it's like it's always been one of us here yeah. uh, in some way, yeah. shape, or form and still dragging to the racetrack now. So that, that it's just a celebration of my Uncle Maurice, uh, my grandmother who yeah. made the wind and nets and all the stuff for the cars. I mean, there's so many pieces. And you know how it is because you come from a family of racers. Right, yeah. uh, everybody contributes. Your grandmother contributes. Your, your granddad. Everybody contributes. And that's the way it is because that's the way racing was back then. Yeah. So um, y'all were celebrating right. Richard, but also this Lee's story. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, every, yeah. Adam's it's not story. just a Richard Petty story. Right. Yeah. Even yeah. though I was at the it's very first the race. the Petty. Yeah. I've been going it's to races for that long. But the big deal was, you know, my dad started and for the first eight or ten years. He was the company. And then I came along, got things all messed up. <laughs> then we finally, uh, it was, he had that bad accident in 61. So then it kind of fell on me and my brother to, to run the operation. And, uh, you know, then uh, it, it worked out pretty good, really. Uh, my dad took up golfing. You know, he'd come in and aggravate us every <laughs> once in a while. But uh, it, was, it was up to us, and it was still a family deal. You know, mother kept the books. She made all the reservations of where we was going. Uh, so, again, it wasn't just a Richard Petty story or Kyle Petty or Lee Petty. It took the whole tribe to make it work. Yeah, yeah. but I, I'm going to chime in. And listen, when we get too far off off track here, Fine. you just when, say, get back, get back, come yeah, here, come yeah. here. There's a wall out here. You need to come back. So here's the here's the, here's the part. You know, Grande started um, in 49, and it was – and you were what 13 12 11 12, 12, 11, years, 11, 12 old. years old and uncle Mars was nine or ten um so he started and they raced um but then when 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 granddaddy went over the wall at daytona in 61 how long did he stay down there how long was he in the hospital four months come four, on in yeah, July. Like, four months yeah. yeah he was in the hospital for four months what were why what were the things that he was dealing with that took that long he had a had a rod in his leg. What a, and it broke his therm, therm, whatever up here. Yep. Tore a kneecap up, uh, punctured a lung, broke, broke a bunch of ribs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we went over there, uh, I think, Monday after the accident. And uh, him and mother, in fact, him and mother stayed the day till they didn't, she didn't even come home. Yeah. And uh, walked in and said, okay, I talked to Diddy. And he was kind of out of that. He said, Okay, y'all go on home, go to Greensboro, and get a car. And back then, it was pretty stock cars. So, you know, go home, get, go to Greensboro, and get a new car. Because we had two cars. I crashed one in one of the races, and then he crashed the other one, and we didn't have That was it. Yeah. So I had to go home and get another car. And he said, y'all go ahead and get a car, and we'll be home uh, probably Friday. You know, four <laughs> months from Friday, he finally come, yeah, he finally come home. <laughs> but yeah. up to that time... Uh, my dad ran the whole racing part of it, and mother took care of the books. Yeah. And my brother and myself just worked on the car. Yeah. So we were home. We didn't have no idea yeah. where we was financially or right. where, anything. So yeah, that, uh, we recovered. That, that That's the crazy part, and that, that that's where I was going with. That's the crazy part. The crazy part was they went to Daytona in 61 with two cars and two drivers um, and basically came home with one driver, meaning him and my Uncle Maurice, and Grandma and Granddaddy stayed down there, and they were out of business. They didn't have any cars, right? Nothing sitting at the shop, nothing. And we had so, a couple of keep people work for us. They just quit, they, yeah, because they thought they know, knew. They yeah, they just assumed, right? They so, just assumed, right? Yeah. So right. from fifty nine, forty nine, to to the beginning of sixty one, it was a thriving business. And then in one one day, and basically one day, because it was a qualifying race. Yeah, right. That's when these accidents happen. Is a qualifying races, um, and um, they were out of business. T- it, Tell tell him the story of I'm gonna take it over here. Tell <laughs> tell, no, tell him the story about you going out the racetrack and then Granddaddy coming to see you in the hospital. So with and picking the glass out of your eyes. Yeah, that, that's what happened. Uh, I don't know, something happened anyhow, and 
We went in the first corner. This is the same. Set. This, this is, is the first race. race. First, first race. Because right. I was going to, I, I was going to ask you. There was somebody else that went out of the track that day. Yeah, no. first qualifying race. Nobody ever talks about. Nobody it. talks about it because we're the only two so people that's ever been out of the track. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyhow, went down in the first corner and a bumper. Somebody had crashed and a bumper went through the windshield, and uh, I didn't have any goggles or nothing on, and it went over the deal and went down to uh, the fence outside. In, uh, turn you know, one. When turn I got one. out, I got out through the windshield. Yeah. Okay. And then when I did, then I went back to the infirmary in the infield, and it was picking glass out of my eyes, and they said somebody just went through three and four. And uh, so I jump up and, and run up there to see what's going on, and, man, I said, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, so uh, let me ask you. So when so the did you see the bumper coming at you? Yeah. Then, and it goes through the windshield? It went, went right through the windshield. And the only thing that kept it from hitting me, at that time we had the, the tack set up. In on front, the dash. On the dash. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that, that hit it somehow and kept it from coming Diverting right through. Diverting it. You know what damn. Mean? And so, <laughs> so the windshield's knocked out, the damn bumper's in the car. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, are you slowing it down? And, no, did no, you I hit, didn't. You man, went straight just, into the fence. I was just holding on because you threw down that. Big bank, right. I don't know. It must it be. Was, did the cars yeah. have side glasses in them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, had side at that glass. time, I had all the glasses. Yeah, so you had side glasses. So glass. as soon as the Everything front opened up, up, the interior just filled up with air. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it just like it just went over. It was a, it was like a parachute. parachute. Wow. So it just did right. this to the car. Holy cow! It never yeah. turned over. It just no. went up on top of the fence, rode a little bit, and then went went down to the bottom of the hill. Yeah, and so you hop out and go to the infield care center. Yeah, and they're picking glass out of your eye. Did they get it all? Uh, yeah. got most of it. Most of it. <laughs> That's how comfortable. That's why he wears sunglasses it, it, I now. Think it, I think it finally worked itself all out. Yeah. yeah. But um, did you recognize immediately that your dad was in trouble over yeah, there? Yeah, we, we knew right quick. Yeah. You know, what was, was there some on. sort of we just We didn't really know how bad it was. Or? And I ran over there and ran up the bank and looked over there. And, you know, there's just two cars, and you couldn't even tell front from rear or right. whatever. And uh, so – Quick as we did, we jumped in the, uh, come back and got in the car and went to the hospital, and uh, where where they took him out of the ambulance and took him in the emergency room, mm -hmm. the, the little blood you could tell right where he went. And I said, Man, this is not good. Yeah. But yeah. anyhow, uh, the good Lord didn't see to take him that day, yeah. so he was still that there. car, is here in Mooresville. Uh, the one, yeah. yeah, that car that he went out of the racetrack in. I've always wondered. So I. I've seen pictures of behind the old shop. Yeah. There's, you know, body parts in that yeah. car and a couple other, you know, convertible or something sitting in the woods, right? Yeah. Eventually, you know, that, you know, somebody came and got that car yeah. and then y'all got rid of the rest of the stuff, cleaned up the yard, right? Um, some of it got buried. Some of it gets buried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of it gets buried. So, um, what I wonder, like when I walk over there to that museum in Mooresville and I see that car, my reaction is, holy cow, that's Lee yep. Petty's car yeah. that went out of the race. That's the car I've seen yep. pictures of so many. Yeah. Like, I've seen pictures of that car sitting down there on the fence so many times in my life. It's a very iconic moment when you would watch any kind of publication in the 90s about NASCAR. That oh, clip of that car going over yep. the wall yeah. was used so many times to promote the sport, right, in the history mm -hmm. of the sport. When I look at it, I have a... Uh, 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 reaction of, of awe and amazement, right? Yeah. When you look at it, how do y'all feel? Because I wonder why yeah. that car isn't in your hands. It, you know, I, I guess I look at it Did as, you, as the end of one era was, and the start of another yeah. era. Is it a, is it a, is it, when you see the car, is your reaction sad, um, upsetting, <laughs> or is it a, a good, does it drum up bad memory, yeah. or is it like, no, you know, nothing? I don't, I don't no. Yeah, and, and maybe we're maybe we're both weird that way, um, and 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 I and I because I say it this way, it is um, there. There's a there's always the next race. Yeah. So that race was behind you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just didn't look back. Yeah. You just you just there's the next race. You know, I know. what I mean? And and that's like he said that was the end of. That was the end of that era. Yeah. That was the end of the Lee Petty era, and then it became is there Richard a, Petty. Is there a tiny little party view that wishes you could have that car, or no? 
You know, what, really, what would you do what with would you it? Do that? I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I, yeah. I, keep, I keep a lot of oh. shit I don't this, need. Hold on. Hold on. So we've got it uh, obviously up there, and especially this year in the 75th. Uh, my sister runs our museum, yeah. uh, the Petty Museum. Well, yeah, there, there you go. You got a museum. Yeah, so so the museum. But we, when we walk through the museum, when he says it, and I walk through the museum, we refer to it as junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that little junk over there that we yeah. had back in the in a storage building. That's that junk over there mm-hmm. that you had. You know what I mean? You yeah. just don't. Yeah. You don't because because it's mm-hmm. it's it served its purpose. Mm-hmm. And it's now you've moved on to something else. Yeah. You know, it it just served, and and you know, it's it's like it's it's like cars, um, and you know, you've got a whole shop of them, but you really don't have cars. You just got a lot of pieces that come together for a weekend as a car, yeah. and then they go back into pieces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, do you have an affinity to those pieces? You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. not that rear end housing, not that sure, front end. Sure, not, yeah. yeah, that that paint scheme or that you know. Where do you draw the line? Right? Yeah, that's right. There is a line somewhere. So I I don't think we ever. We ever looked at it. even when Adam's accident happened. I never looked at it, you know, with that with his car. Yeah. Um, we have that car, um, but it's just like man, you you look to and I and I look around your place here, and you, and you the the photos of the shops or cars and stuff. You look to the cars that were that brought joy. Yeah, yeah. you look at the winning cars. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look at them and you say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, I know that one. That one. That one got me where I wanted to I be. I just I thought. I know I agree with you there, and I'd always wondered. I I never even thought about it until you were coming today, and I was like, man, I've I've seen that car, I've seen Lee's car, and I've looked <laughs> at it in amazement yeah. because of what it, what because of how many times I'd seen that clip, and and I then I thought, man, I wonder if they feel completely the opposite about yeah. it. And it's like it's like a not it's it, not a great memory. It does. It, it was just something. It that, was just a happening. It was yeah, supposed yeah. to be, and uh, you know, you just learn to live with. Them. Whatever the circumstances, you learn to live yeah. with. Yeah. You so said you Lee, just kind of, kind of let it get, go in the past. You said Lee got it, got into golf. How, um, <laughs> how hard was it for him to reckon with, you know, the, the change in his life, right? <laughs> well, the big deal there, he uh, he tried to run. He ran two or three races. Yeah. And I think really the the last race he ran was at Martinsville, and when the race was over, he got out and said, "This ain't the fun no more." I yeah. So, so he got to make he that said, choice. That's it. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. At least yeah. he got to make yeah. the choice. Right. Why right? did he take up golf? Because he never played golf before. Well, when he was growing up, uh, he was a caddy at okay. a golf course. And really? That, back, yeah. yeah, back during the Depression or sometime before the Depression. Yeah. And he always <laughs> liked golf, but, but he never had any time for it. Sure. And then once uh, he had his accident, he needed to exercise and to go through the therapy and all that stuff. So he took up golfing. And from... From the last day he lived, he's out in he's, the front yard yeah. knocking yeah. golf balls back and forth. You yeah. know, Grandma said he'd go. She called it the glory hole. He'd go up to Sumner, yeah. play golf, and on rainy days they play poker. Yeah, so that was it. But he went to the golf course every day. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. good life. <laughs> yes. So, Richard, in all of the cars, uh, all the gen generations <laughs> of cars, tell me the car. Um, tell me the era where you really enjoyed the car really enjoyed felt like the car and you fit you know probably uh early mid 70s really uh you know driving bunch, the charger we won a bunch of races with the charger and we had a lot of experience with it and we we got to run it like four or five years yeah you know what i mean and uh it was it was of all the race cars i've ever had it was the most natural race car that was before all the wind tunnel testing and all this kind of stuff but that car was so sensitive, you could change the spoiler a quarter inch, go from dead push to dead loose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, yeah. But we had worked with it so much, we learned that. And uh, so it was just a pleasure to drive it. It worked on short tracks, or road courses, super speedways. It was just a good, good all around best race car I've ever had. And I'll ask you the same question question kyle um you run a lot of different yeah. generations um from back Shh. from 80 to it's not run those big cars dude you ran them all <laughs> you did all right I, I started at daytona with lee springs and torsion bars mm-hmm. um so um you know what honestly i, I think the early 80s um when we went to the buicks yep and then to the pontiacs yep. the, those and then to the to the to the football shaped ford you know the little the the <laughs> The Ford and got to drive for the Wood Brothers through that that part. That was a fun time because Arrow was a part of it, but it was not the dominant part. Yeah. You know, until we started, 
until until we started taking the front bumper all the way to the ground. You know, that's when the arrow horse left the barn and you were never going to get the arrow yeah, horse back yeah. in the barn. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Before that, from a driver's standpoint, from a Richard Petty and from your dad and from, you know, Daryl and guys like that, you felt like everything you ever learned on a short track, you could take straight to Charlotte and Daytona and everything. It was all about springs. It was all about shocks. It was all about hooking up, coming them off. It was mechanical. Yeah. And you felt like, tell me a driver that didn't think he was smarter than everybody else mechanically. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But but the arrow thing hadn't hadn't raised his head. So for me, I think that was a period when you felt like a yeah. driver could make a difference and a big difference. Yeah, I, th I think the arrow deal took a lot away from ingenuity from uh, each team. Took it, I think it took away from the driver because before uh, if the car pushed or loose or whatever, that just happened to be part of the car, and you could, there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah. So then it was up to the driver to learn to get the very best out of what he had to work with. And now uh, the cars are so, I mean, a quarter pound of air changes the whole race car. I mean, you know, how can a driver keep up yeah. with that? I don't know. I, I think we were, and to that point, I think we were over at Charlotte when I was driving with, with for the Wood Brothers and with Leonard, and I was a little free getting in the corner, and I said, maybe it needs a little bit more front spring, just something to hold me up getting in the corner, a little bit more right front spring. He's, no, I, I'll fix it. He just changed the front end setting. And it fixed everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he felt like he had enough tools in his toolkit that it wasn't just a spring change. Yeah. It wasn't just a quarter pound of air. I'll just change your front end setting and, yeah. and make it work for you. And it did. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you mentioned briefly uh, that I wanted to talk about, um, as I've learned and tried to learn more and more about my family and my dad and Ralph and collecting photographs and things yeah. like that, um, <clears throat> I learned about his Ralph's brief um, history driving for the Petties. Yeah, um, y'all had a couple cars. Um, Lee had a couple cars that would run from time to time um, well, we ran, with different drivers. Yeah, we ran convertibles and hardtops. Right, and uh, I think he did drove a couple of convertible races. I think he must probably drove a hardtop race or two. Yes, and uh, but we kept breaking axles every every time he did going good. He breaking axles. So. I think he ran three or four different races for us, and uh, but that was '58, I guess. Right, 1958. Uh, there's a picture of Ralph with you and Maurice and Lee on y'all's property. Um, y'all were hanging around in the at on a porch or around a porch or something at the house. Probably the back porch there on the yeah. side porch coming yeah. out of the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And, and I found I thought I've always seen Ralph in he he, he was always very territorial right his car his shop yeah. his you know his he sat on his trailer yeah. his truck and it was really interesting for me to see ralph in another environment yeah <laughs> you know beholden to another yeah entity, oh, yeah, yeah right the petty the petty yeah. the petty family so what was it what do you remember i guess of of ralph yeah how was he yeah, mannerisms me, me and dale worked with him right you know what i mean and uh he was easy to work with mm -hmm. he, you know he knew what he wanted in the car okay we didn't and, and you know these teenage kids, we didn't, we didn't have a clue what was going on, you know. And uh, but uh, when we worked with him and stuff, uh, we we let him kind of tell us what to do yeah. because we weren't smart enough to tell him what to do. And uh, it just uh, again, it just didn't didn't work out because we weren't looking for a, a, a driver all the time. Just from time to time, we find out that. So and so wasn't going to be at a race, and we had a good chance to run good. So, we call up Ralph, and you know, a lot of Sunday races and stuff that Ralph would run Friday night and Saturday night didn't have no place to run on Sunday, so he'd come and drive for us. Yeah. Um, later, you know, later on, you would end up racing against my dad as he's coming into the yeah. Cup Series. One of my um, one of the things that I've never got to talk to you about was Martinsville. Uh, Dad's a rookie. <laughs> um, this is a this race just got uploaded on the NASCAR um, website. Um, and so Dad starts right behind you, or a couple rows, two rows behind you on the inside, and dives down onto the inside three wide going into turn one, <laughs> hits you and three or four of the cars, big yeah. crash. He he goes <laughs> and you we, we go down. I'm on the inside. I think somebody's on the outside. And we go down and turn into the corner, and all of a sudden there's a car on my hood. Yeah. Because what happened when the race started, 
he just turned left, went up across the grass, and jumped the curb and jumped right in the middle of that whole crowd. Yeah. That, that was my introduction to Dale Earnhardt. Yes, <laughs> and I, I know. I know that I had heard that at the end of the day, you took your, you took, a, you went over to him and stuck your finger in his chest and told Listen, him, "Okay, <laughs> right." And that was a good, that was a good lesson for him. I imagine. What it must have felt like to have Richard Petty hunting you down after the race to make sure he got his point across. I tell you, I don't know if he learned anything from him, but <laughs> <laughs> he learned some of it anyway. Yeah. Okay, he he knew not to knock everybody out. After that, he just take one at a time, knock them out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So Daryl always tells the story about about the finger. You know what yeah. I mean? But uh, honestly, and but that's the way you grew up. That's the way we all grew up. Yeah. If you if you got. When the race is over, we go go find the guy. Yeah. Don't tweet him. Right. Don't yeah, text him. No. Don't call him. Just go find the guy. Yeah. Talk about it. And and you, I'm gonna scream at you, and you're gonna scream at me. But then it's over with. You then just, everybody went home, and forgot about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. It's just cool to um to think about Richard, ha- you know, being you know Richard at that time was you know he was the king. Oh yeah. Right. Went you know as competitive as ever on the racetrack, winning races and championships still, and. Uh, Stick, you know, having to, you know, you never, never something you want to do, but having to tell one of the rookies how yeah. how it gets done, <laughs> and I, I, I just love. So I did, I did a big project on 1979. Yeah, and great learned, project. I, I really enjoyed it because I learned all these little things, right? Yeah. These little stories, and so um, I love the idea. We always think about dad, same similar to you, right? This huge figure. And I love thinking about Dad being this rough, raw kid yeah. that had to get, you know, straightened out yeah. and needed, you know, needed guys like you and Donnie Allison mm-hmm. and all these other yeah. drivers to. He had to learn, yes. Learn, yeah, yeah. teach him. But think, so think about that, though. And that that's the fascinating part for me because it's it's a different thing. So I grew up, I grew up in the 60s going and during the summers and hanging out and doing that stuff. So there was always. Him, Bobby and Donnie, Kale, mm-hmm. Pearson, Glotzbach, Leroy, Baker, you know, all those guys. And then, so then your dad shows up and he's got a race against those guys and they're still in their prime. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, he's coming in, so you're starting with those guys in their prime and you got to go head to head with them. And that's still, yeah. that's that era that's like that golden era when you, yeah. when you, when you look at it. And that, that's the cool part about, coming in when your dad came in and when Ricky came in and with a lot of those guys, they got to experience both. They got to experience the that era and got to experience the coming of Jeff and you and, and that next era, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is a great, they're that bridge. They're the bridge that connects the past to, to yeah, where I'll, we are today. I always look at NASCAR being different segments. Uh, to begin with, you had the Leap 80, Fireball Roberts, Junior Johnson crowd. Then Pearson and Allison and all that crowd came through. Then Daryl came through. Your dad came through, uh, took that era to another stage. Uh, Jeff comes in, takes it to another stage. Jimmy comes in, takes it to another yeah. stage. And right now we're looking for the next guy to take us to the next this, stage. Yeah. I, and I'll right say- now we don't have basically a leader. You know what I mean? We're, uh, the fox is out there. Yeah. We don't have a fox for everybody to run at because – Everything is so even now. You might run really, really good one race, and you're lucky to make the race the next deal next week. And uh, so there's no dominant figure in cup racing right now. It's just a toss-up. So think about, so think about that. So he had to put up with um, Buck Baker and Lee Petty and the flocks and those guys yeah. come and pointing at him saying, yeah. Yeah, don't, you don't do that to me. Right. You know what I mean, that's where he got the finger from. He got it from that. I, I, I'll tell you this. So, and I know there's your dad's told you little things about if you do this. So he told me one, one time we were at Daytona and he said, um, or we were talking about some stuff and he didn't give me much advice about racing. That's pretty obvious. Um, <laughs> but so he, but he said, you know, when you're, when you come to the line and end of the race, if you just lean on somebody a little bit, sometimes it'll make them, just check up a little bit. Now everybody runs over everybody all the time. So we're running a qualifying race down there. And I get into AJ's door, coming to the line, um, to Foyt's door. <laughs> and I'm tickled crapless, man. I run like fifth. He runs sixth or fourth or third, whatever. Yeah. I'm tickled crapless. I'm just about to get out of the car and my window net flams down. And it's AJ. 
and he's standing there and he said, what was that all about? And he's, you know, he's screaming and cussing like AJ Cannon. And I'm, I got my helmet on and I'm fading <laughs> yeah. back to the other side. And I said, I said, my dad always said, when you're coming to the line, if you get into somebody, it, it might make them check up a little bit. And he said, so you got that from your dad? And I said, yeah. He said, okay. And he turned around and walked <laughs> off. It was like, then it was cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, then it was okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be 20 years old and running AJ Floyd, it was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it wasn't okay to begin the with. The yeah, it yeah. wasn't okay to begin with. <laughs> That's so funny. You had a good excuse, yeah. right? NASCAR fans, FanDuel, America's number one sports book is here. And right now, new customers, they get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. You just go to FanDuel.com slash Dale to sign up. And then you can bet on everything from individual race winners to prop bets to which driver is going to take home the championship all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Start your engines with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com slash Dale to get started. FanDuel, authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. 21 plus and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit more than a game.nc.gov. I want to go back since I got both of you here. Talk about uh, Kyle a little bit um, before you even drove a race car. Um, you know what kind of son was Kyle? I mean, we see the pictures of him as a uh, you know playing football for the high school and the quarterback, and seems like he had a very you know aside from being involved in racing and and that's a unique thing for us as we know growing up in the sport it seemed he had a very you you know traditional Mm -hmm. childhood right high school all of the traditional experiences that anybody might have or expect um but you know what what was he like as a son (laughs) i don't know he's on one ahead (laughs) okay yeah. That's a good answer. Let's stop there. Let's stop there, Let's stop there he, ladies and gentlemen. It was, it was kind of a deal that he never got in any bad trouble. Yeah. But it just mischief stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? With his sisters. Like with, what? With the people at school. What was the one thing you that – Cops brought me home one day. Wait. Huh? Cops brought me home well, one yeah, day. Yeah, that, that was one deal. Uh, we had, had a cousin that lived down the road maybe half a mile. <clears throat> Kyle had this little bike, motorcycle. Because he always had a motorcycle since he was six, seven years old. But uh, he'd ride down the power line, and he'd go across the road, and a guy lived across the road. Well, one night he was coming back, and it was about dark, so he got out on the highway. Oh. Oops. And then yeah. so happened. I was, was eight or nine. So yeah. happened there was a couple of state men. I guess the neighbors had been complaining about it. Anyhow, so I'm, I'm sitting in the house there. And uh, somebody knocks on the door, and I get up. There's two state patrol cars and a little motorcycle <laughs> sitting outside the door. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, I go out, and I said, okay, what's happening? And what happened, Kyle had come out across the road and got on the uh, asphalt road. And when he seen the police, he took a shortcut. He went yeah. down. And so happened, the guy was sitting down there yep. waiting on him. One of them was sitting they, down there. They knew exactly what his route was. Yeah. Oh. So somebody had told on him. Wow. Man, but all anyhow. this for a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they yeah, brought him home big. and just took, said, okay, just, just don't get do out on the road. No. Don't get out yeah. on the road Why no more than you have to. Why were so hard up to get you, man? I, I, <laughs> listen, you I don't not? know. I wasn't, I wasn't the only kid with a motorcycle. They were. Listen, we used to play ball up at the ballpark. Um play Little League Baseball, and, and there'd be six or seven of us rode motorcycles right. to Little League Ball practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, because all, all, all the farm kids, all the rural yeah. farm kids, everybody had a bike. So so yeah. you grow up in this house. I've seen pictures of this house. Yeah. He had trophies everywhere. Yeah, they were everywhere. 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 Um, Tell him about being in the ceiling. They were in the attic. What? One came through the attic one day. Yeah. One came through the ceiling. Fell through. Yeah, because what – so you had – so the you know you pull the steps down you go up and and there was just trophies yeah. everywhere and they'd be on the rafters there'd be a piece of plywood and the trophies set on plywood and the trophies yeah. set on. Well, Granddaddy had all those oak trees and stuff. Squirrels would get them. Squirrels would get in the attic, knock the trophies over. So 
trophies fall over and come through the ceiling, come through the, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the yeah, just, yes. just stick through like that. So, <laughs> so there were trophies everywhere. I mean, it took, it, there, I cannot, it, and I, I don't mean it to sound arrogant. I don't no, mean to sound yeah. anything. It's just that, it's just that there were just trophies everywhere. And I, I've, I've told this story before. I mean, at that, at that time, being, being six, seven, eight years old and, and Sharon and then Lisa, um, we were just cocky enough, I guess, or whatever, that you didn't go to a racetrack that you didn't believe that coming home there's going to be a trophy in the yeah. back seat. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just knew you were going to Rockingham? Yeah, we'll bring a trophy back. Yeah. Going to Dar- Yeah, we'll bring a trophy back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Charlotte's about the only place we never thought we was going to bring a trophy <laughs> back from. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that was like a struggle. But um, but it was just like you just had them. You yeah. know, and they they go off for – they go to the Northern Tour and run – Islip and Malta and Fonda and all, all all up in there and bring back four or five trophies yeah. and just throw them in the attic. That's where yeah. they go. That's where everything went. So um, where do you think most of that stuff is today? Most of it's in the museum. Most, yeah. That's, yeah. that's one thing. <laughs> Once the deal fell through the ceiling, uh, my wife Linda made us move them down to the yeah. garage. And we had a front office there, and we just stuck them in there. No museum or nothing, just someplace. Yeah. And they just stacked on top of each other. And then eventually uh, we opened up the front, started a little museum, and it's grown. Now that we took the race cars out, uh, the garages, two different garages, full of trophies and cars and junk. Yeah. <laughs> junk everywhere. So um, where, what, what is this, where, where was this house? Right next door. So is the, it still there? Yeah, yeah. Who lives uh, in it? Mark lives in it. Mark Petty lives there. Okay. Um, yeah, Uncle Mark's is yeah. the youngest. So it was Grandma, Grandma's house. He lives in the house that Lee Petty grew up in, or it, it, he, family. No, 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 so the so the house the house that he was born in and and grew up in sits right beside the race shop. It's yep. the White House. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. And the little brick house is right beside right it. beside of it. It was, it was that was nineteen hundred square house. feet. Yeah, that's yeah. where we lived. That's where me and Sharon and and Lisa grew up with right. with him and Mama. Yeah. And so all of that's still there. It's still there. It's all still, still there. In a modern yeah. form, yeah. right? It's still there. The buildings, see, I, this is still something there. I wish I was, I, I could see with my own eyes. So the buildings are all still there. Yep, still there. And is, what's what's in the back, the furthest, furthest, like, in my mind, I want to imagine that we could walk into one of the old <laughs> buildings. You ain't been in this closet in forever. You ain't been in this part of the shop <laughs> forever. You're yeah. going to open it up, and there's going to be, like, all this old racing we're, junk we, sitting around. We've got trailers yeah. sitting all they around. Got trailers. We, we've taken of, most of it out, and, and Hemi heads, blocks. Oh. Um, they had some Superbird noses and Are some wings. Are you serious? Yes, yeah, some original yeah. Superbird it's, noses and wings. And then, you know, we built the Christ, the kit cars. It had a yes. bunch of kit car stuff. Really? It had a lot of kit car stuff. All that there. stuff still. Still still around somewhere in, the, in those cabinets yes, and stuff, man. It's, it's, it is fasc- it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. It really is to go that, through it. Because I told you, it's just junk. We talk yeah. about. You don't se- give anything away. 75 years of history. Yeah. yeah. History's still there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, physical it's, history is still there. I mean, you'd start cleaning out stuff and you'd throw something out on the floor. And they were like, "Yeah, that's a uh, that's a tow bar that we towed to Riverside with in '57 or '58. Right. You know what I mean? Something like that. That's just what we pulled behind the old Chrysler. Yeah. What? I mean, there, there were and they between him and Dale and when Uncle Marcel was around between those three, they knew what everything was. But right. Granddaddy and those guys, like Ralph, grew up in the Depression, so you didn't throw anything away. Right. Yeah. You, know, you just put it somewhere because it, you could use it later. Sure. You know, you're going to use it for something later. It might, it might be a broke rod. You weld that thing back together. You might need an extra <laughs> rod somewhere. You know what I mean? I mean, you gotta you gotta keep that stuff up yeah, somewhere. We, we still got the original floor in the original shop that my dad worked out of in 1949. Really? Yeah, yeah. What's it, it look like? Started as a reaper shed, and we closed it all in. And he he worked in there till 1956, and we built a little shop out back. 57, we built another building. 58, we built another building. So there must be. Yeah. A thousand doors and add-ons. Yeah. It's, it's just it's just add ons. Just kept so, adding on as you needed. You know what I mean? Yeah, the but, but we still got uh old feed scales that we used to scale mm-hmm. the cars on. Yeah. We got a fifty Plymouth setting on the thing, dust everywhere, yeah. old tools laid in the floor. And that that is the history. That that is where it all started. Yeah. The floor him and Uncle Marsh poured the floor. It's out so of a wheelbarrow. Out of a wheelbarrow. So it's, it's like this. <laughs> but that's okay because yeah. it was but, dirt before but it, that. But right. it, beat, it beat the far out of that red dirt that oh, was yeah. having a yeah. farm. See what I mean? Yes. So it was just an old farm shed. Yeah. 
and then they poured the poured the concrete in there. It's it that those those things when you walk through there, and and we were we did a um, we did a some taping for a, a thing called Shift for NASCAR.com. It's the eyes, the the evolution of NASCAR through the eyes of, of my dad. Yeah, and um, and you you watched a couple. Yeah. I'm thank you very, very much. Yeah. So anyhow, so we and I asked him. I said, how many races were won out of here? How many races did Granddaddy win? And and we figured what. 30 some, 40 yeah, some like were one out of that one, a, a room that's not any bigger than this. Right. That, that's not any bigger than this, that they won 40 some, 30, 40 some races yeah. out of that one little building, just dragging that car to the racetrack. What kind of discipline did Richard None. display as a father? None. 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 So, like, None. you never, you, Richard Petty never pulled a belt. None. No. Never. No. Here's the way it worked, and, and we've, we've talked about this. You tell Before, it. Yeah. yeah, you tell it. You tell well, him. what happened was I was the man. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He'll tell you. He'll we, tell had, you. we had three kids at the time, yeah. and I'd go out and make the money racing. And Linda, my wife, took care of the house and all the bills and all that stuff. So when the kids acted up, she took care of it right then. Yeah, because she didn't want to say, "Well, your daddy gets home." Sure. Because when I came home. They wanted everything to be smooth. Yeah, me kids loved me, and I didn't get on to them. Yep. you know what I mean. Okay, so yeah. she she disciplined the kids. Yeah, and under, I didn't have to. Yeah, and understand. Yeah, and and you got to think back. It's a different time. Sure. Yeah. Because because the thing was, so he'd leave and might be gone for two weeks. Really? Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. I mean, because that's yeah. they go race. Sure. It's not it's not like it is now. You, you were know what I mean? You, were you? Um, I know you were doing your own thing with sports and stuff, but were you like? Damn, I want to go. Yeah, from so when I when I was in the third grade, I started going during the summers with him. Yeah, um, man, for, remember I, I rode that bro, I had a broke leg. Yeah, <laughs> rode in that truck from we went to um, to Michigan. Michigan and around Michigan, and then went to Riverside and around Mich- Riverside. Did we How come back through you? Texas? I don't, I, I don't know if we came back grade? to Texas. We came, third grade, third and grade. So when so you I, when you're at the racetrack at that age, what would you you know they let you in the garage and all that? Yeah. Yeah, they'd try to yeah. throw you out. Gasaway sure. tried to throw you out. Yeah. <laughs> but but they, you you were in, especially you go to Riverside and places. They weren't weren't as harsh. Um, they wouldn't let me touch their car much. They Jabe Thomas would let me wax his car every now and then. Right. They, they'd <laughs> let me pull the wagon every now and then do stuff. But you'd you'd move tires around. But I, I was you just in the garage. Area, you just man. got you're out just and there. found something to do. Yeah, you're just there. Yeah. You know, Davey would be there a lot of times. Davey came. David Davey started coming a little later. Ricky and Larry were there more. Yeah, right. But Pearson wasn't running all the time. I mean, he he yeah. wouldn't. But um, Ricky and Larry would come more because they were a little bit older. Yeah. Um, but then Davey started coming later. Who was there? Any other kids around your age? Jake Elder's kid, Randy. What Remember about Randy? the Wood Brothers? Yeah. They they were around, but not as not not as much because they ran a limited schedule. Yeah. yeah that's you know what right. I mean? They, they were like with Pearson, so they would yeah. run a limited schedule. When with you were your dad and David running nose to tail in so many races, did you and them boys get along? Yeah. Everybody got along. Good. Hey, 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 they was busy playing in the infield. Yeah, right? even though the race yeah, was going on. Yeah, <laughs> one, so on race day you couldn't get anywhere close. You know what I mean? During the week, you know, you you could do a lot of stuff in the garage area and, and mess around. But yeah, you know, it it never transferred to. I mean, listen, Davey told me a million times how great Bobby Allison was, and I was always about a foot taller and about a hundred pounds heavier, so I'd just whip his butt and tell him how great Richard Petty <laughs> yeah. was. I mean, it was that kind of thing. Right. You know what I mean? But it, it, you never, it never got to that. The, the, and I, I say this all the time, and, and I, I told Clay this, and we were talking about, it. you know, the um, used to have the azaleas around Martinsville, Martinsville. so yeah. pretty, yeah, man. It was awesome. Duck pond outside, and all the azaleas, and it looked like, man, it looked like you're going to the Masters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's a, but they had that scoreboard down there in Turn One, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know that guy'd sit there at the end of it, and every ten laps he'd walk down to the flip end, the and flip the flip the cards on how many laps had been run, and you know every now and then he'd get up and he'd change the numbers on, you know, twenty one running first, forty three running second, twelve with Allison, you know, driving for, um, for Junior and them, and so he'd change them. So when as soon as the race was over, they hadn't no more thrown the freaking checkered flag. We had blast across the racetrack and change every number to the forty three. No Every number, every number on the scoreboard to forty three, <laughs> and then you'd you'd be messing around. You look up there, and Davy was up there, and he'd change them all to twelve. No then, sh- then then Eddie and them would get up there, and they'd change yes. them all to twenty one. So that was the whole deal was to be there the last one. Yeah. And we were always there because he'd sit and sign autographs for a man. Yeah, so we'd we'd leave that place with forty three, first five <laughs> positions and laps led forty three yeah. right there at the end. That was the way. So I mean, that, but that was just stuff you did. You know what I mean? Because just made your own fun. So at the end of. The um and I, re- I don't. I feel like I remember this, 
even though it's literally on the very fringe of me starting to come to the races. Yeah. But when the race would end, you didn't leave. That was literal. Like, you didn't leave till yeah. the last person got an autograph. Well, I think I got into the habit. When we first went, started going to the races, uh, just me and Dale and maybe another guy. And, uh, you know, we'd load and unload the car and all that stuff. So as time progressed, more people wanted autographs. And uh, I finally said, okay, if I sit over here and sign autographs, them guys will have the truck all loaded up and I won't have to do nothing. <laughs> right. so, so while they was working, I'd be signing autographs. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they'd get the thing all loaded up, they'd come and say, okay, we're ready to go. So that's when we leave. Yeah, right. but the other, the other thing is too, is is like it's, and and it's it was more like short track racing, okay? When, when they throw the checkered flag, they'd open the gate under the flag stand and race fans would just come down. Or into the, yeah. 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 And, and you didn't, you know, you didn't have a garage area at Martinsville. You didn't have a garage area. So they just come to the car. We must have lost a million shifter knobs. Then <laughs> yeah. people would spin oh, yeah. those yeah. shifter knobs off a car and pop, put them in their pocket. It must Take be a million Richard Petty shift. Yeah, gas caps off the back, pull those things. Because you, really? you know, with just the yeah. the safety wire on it, oh, they'd yeah. snatch those. Anything they could take, they'd take. They'd, they'd take pull it. decals off the front, you know, oh, decal. Really? Yeah, they'd, they just, you just take stuff because that was, it was open game. Yeah. But, he would, and you go to Wilkesboro, and, and you got to go back in, in time again. There were 15,000 people there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was a huge crowd. Mm, yeah. That was a huge yeah. crowd for a cup race, you know, in the, in the late 60s, early 70s. It's not what it is. So it, it was a different time. So you didn't, I love these stories, um, but I'm going to always keep bringing this back. You didn't drive race cars as a teenager, mm -mm. right? Yeah. And so. Couldn't. Couldn't. Yeah. Why? He wouldn't let you. Why wouldn't you let him? They wouldn't let me. <laughs> listen, they. Would, I don't believe that. They wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me sit in a car and back it out. Why? I was shot. Why? Stay out of that race car. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Did I, you not want him to become a race car I, driver? No, that that was not the deal. We didn't know what happened. We used to work on the race car, mm -hmm. and when we get all set up and stuff. I'd jump in it and go down the road and drive over to the county line, make sure that everything was working and all that. And we was afraid that if he got in one of them cars, he'd do the same thing. Oh. Okay. I mean, 15-year-old kid, hey, man, I'm in a race car. I'm going to go down there like my dad. I'm going to go over to the county line. Yeah. So Dale, Dale wouldn't let him close to the car. Yeah, they wouldn't let me. Really? Yeah. I never so, – listen, I never drove a car. I never drove a car. I drove, when, when we put that Magnum together – and drove it down to the gas pump at the end of the fence and back and took it down to the yeah. gas pump and put gas in it and brought it back. That's probably the first time I ever drove a car. <laughs> the a magnum car. that you put together to go to, to Daytona. Daytona with your own arc race. Yeah. That was your, you literally. I'd never been around, I'd never driven around a racetrack so while until I rolled out of pit road So why your dad wasn't, you know, wasn't a strict <laughs> discipl <laughs> discipline type of father they they and I get this vibe from from him being around him all these years and and Dale too when it came to that race shop and the yeah. the job they were doing at the race shop and what was going on there they were very strict yeah oh yeah guidelines right yeah, there was yeah you had a, you had a box like we were talking about it the other day like um when I first started when I'd go over there when I was 12 and they'd put me, stand me at the at the sandblaster and they just I'd you know, trailing or we, we do springs, we do spindles, you know, tape off the spindle part of it, you know, and sandblast it. And then by the time I was 13, I got where I could magnaflux. They trusted me to magnaflux, which mm -hmm. was a huge day for yeah. me. You know what I mean? Run that thing through that, put the, make sure there's no cracks. Man, you, you'd find a crack. It's like, yeah, man, I saved them, man. I, <laughs> yes. I got, I've done something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then they'd let me paint them. You know, you'd paint the parts and pieces and take them back. Dale would do the front ends, Wade to do the rear ends. And you'd just take the parts. Um, and then that, then Richie and them taught me to weld by, by the time I was 12 or so, uh, working on kit cars and stuff. So they taught me to weld and they let me weld stuff. And you just worked in the engine room for a little while, for about a year. So yeah. worked in the body shop for about a year, just worked in each apartment. By the next thing you know, you're 16, 17 years old. The kit cars, uh, this was a, this was kind of an initiative by Chrysler to get into short track racing. Yep. Right. My dad tested with pete hamilton i oh, believe yeah. over yeah. at concord yeah. with one of the prototypes yeah yeah um which was kind of a big deal I, there's a there's a spread in a couple of stock yeah. car yeah. magazines right. and so forth around that yeah. and you can see dad and i've got some pictures of that day 
Um, and that was 74 ish, I think. Yeah, three, four, so, right along yeah. there, five. So, dad, right dad early literally, 70s. Early 70s. Yeah. Right. yeah. Dad had just started racing yeah. himself. It was, it was crazy, man. You get a, um, and to interrupt you here, sorry, no. but you, you got, you got two boxes, two big, two Carb, big, giant boxes, giant cardboard boxes with wooden floors, you know what I mean? Okay. And there would be a frame bolted to the blocks, bolted to, bolted to the floor, uh, with a roll cage. Um, and the bodies, it would already be tacked and hung on. You could get them tacked and hung on, or you could have them the other way. It would come and, frame with the body tacked on it? Yeah, and and you get um, – and then in the other box was a block and the rear end housing and all the stuff. Running and running you, get a, you get a book about this thick, <laughs> yeah. and you start it at the front just like you would a Building model a car kit. kit. No sh- and you went through it. And then when you got to the end, you called – there was a number – uh, and you called Chrysler. Yep. Chrysler had a had a hotline you'd call, and you'd call them and say, "Hey, I'm running um, Caraway. What springs do I need?" And they would tell you what leaf springs to put in the back and what torsion bars yep. from from their calculations. This is a good place to start. And I think you got f- eight wheels, and they would pay for the first two sets of tires that you got for it. What? You know what I mean that that well, was, it was the, a, it, it was, was a package. Deal, it was a package deal, man. It was it Go puts racing. you in racing. Yeah. This will put you in racing if you put this thing together. How long did they do that? A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. 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 And then wonder why it stopped. Yeah. So, you know, they sold a bunch of them through the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we shipped a ton of them out to to Iowa and I think we St. shipped Louis. some to South America. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He had one. We had one that that'll um You raced it. He he raced he it, raced against Jody. <laughs> Jody really, Jody really kicked her butt down in Rome, Georgia, one night with it. You yeah. have to, I know there's a picture of you at Caraway. Yeah, racing the car. Yeah. Pete raced it. You you raced it, and Pete raced it. I think. Yeah. I think well, both of y'all raced uh, it. We got Joe Milliken. Joe raced it. Joe That's won right. some races with yeah. us for it. Really? Yeah. So he was doing testing all the time. Right. Yeah. You know. Okay. Joe was a heck of a driver. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He started the same same year that was a great rookie year man yes that crop was 79 has a huge impact yeah that's like you and and kenza i mean there's been rookie classes that's like him and and i mean there's been yeah Yeah. him and pearson there's been rookie classes that just had a was like dropping a boulder and into the water you know what i mean i mean it had a huge ripple of it and then there's rookie classes that yeah yeah just nothing nothing sorry no it's good um (laughs) I uh that that was pretty interesting around learning doing that 79 project was learning about Joe and celebrating him because he was the you know when you looked at the rookie class at Daytona um of course we didn't know we're looking at Harry yeah. Gant through the lens of what we know Harry Gant is today yeah. right yeah. he was just a just Harry Gant coming yeah. out of the short tracks back then and he 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 drove for like five different teams that year but yeah. when you looked at the class you didn't look at Joe and go, oh, this is the threat. Yeah. And he ended up being, he led it most of the year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Ended up being the toughest competition for dad. Um, and Joe r- worked for y'all for years yeah. and would take your charger, like I guess your third and fourth charger, and run the sportsman races at Daytona with yep. it and stuff. Yeah. Yep. You know? Y'all sold, a, y'all sold a lot of equipment. Oh, yeah. Um, he ran a bunch of races. I say you got new equipment. Yep. Yeah. He ran a lot of y'all stuff, but you also sold to Buddy Arrington. Buddy, Buddy, Buddy wound yeah. up when we went really seventy eight away from went, Chrysler. Went completely out of the Chrysler business. Yeah. Uh, they wound up with everything really in Martinsville. Yeah. So he had cars, he had engines, rear ends, front ends, springs. He ran that I mean, a we while. Just, we just cleaned house really yeah. because uh, when we went with uh, GM. It's all four core springs. Yeah. Everything was completely suspension was completely yeah. different. Why so, why Buddy Arrington? Well Buddy uh, Chief had built engines and stuff for him all along. Yep. And he was always a Chrysler man. And so if we had an older car and he needed a car, we'd sell yeah. him a car. Yeah. Sell him a rear end. So I we was his parts house. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then when we got out of the business, he said, Hey, you're gonna have to get rid of that stuff, I'll just take it off. So he wound up with that. I think he wound up with a truck, yeah. trailer. Yeah, there I mean, wasn't the whole, a, the whole work. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of Chrysler people. You had Buddy. Uh, you had Jabe. Yeah. Jabe Thomas run that run that thing when he was running for a while. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then, then so, John we, Sears out of we, down there. He, run, so, he run that four we, car out of. Yeah, Negree was a yeah, Chrysler. Negree, yeah, Negree. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, sold Jabe it. Jabe a car, uh, and uh, they were get, NASCAR was just getting out of the dirt track business, so we didn't have a certain. A dirt track car, all our cars were asphalt. 
So I sold Joe, the Jeva, a car. So we borrowed the car and go to Columbia, South Carolina, win the race. Mm-hmm. We borrowed again. We go to, I guess, the very last race they run at uh, Raleigh on dirt. Yeah, the fairgrounds. We win the race there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and what happened, we didn't pay him. What happened when we'd bring the car in, we could completely disassemble Everything on the car was brand new. Brand new engine, brand new rear end springs, whatever. So they wanted to give it back to him. Hey, man, for five or six races, he just changed oil in yeah. and go to the race. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So he had a brand new car so, a couple times a year. Yeah. So Wendell a bunch of stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. Wendell, Wendell, up Wendell, always, yeah. And Wendell ended up with a bunch really? of stuff. He was always down there. Yeah, yeah he was always down there. And, and you got you to remember, too, from Buddy and Jabe and Wendell, we were the closest guys. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, they just come across. The, yeah, they just come across the Virginia line, yeah. and we're there. You know, yeah. in Greensboro. What was that like for you to be? I mean, you know, you're at the racetrack and you're seeing these people. But what was it like for you to come home from school and and see competitors and other people just listen, meandering about? Right. It, it was always listen. It was I loved race people. Yeah. You know, and I'm like you. I just that loved. Must have been amazing. I, yeah, it was because it was like. You see them at the racetrack, but here they are at your place. You know yes. what I mean? Marcus drove that little Honda down there and would pick up parts. Marcus was another one that had, had the Dodges, and he'd come out of Asheville, and he'd get stuff. Um, but Wendell and Franklin would come down there, and Buddy and, and Joey Arrington, Joey, they were Joey. always – they were they were down there all the time. Then you had Chubby Arrington and those guys. They they were always down there. They, they run Modifieds yeah. up, up, in, uh, up in Virginia, so they would all, all come down there. It was always cool – to see other people. I, I remember, there, and I, I've, I've said this before, I remember when he switched to Ford in 69, and we went to, um, we rode over here to Charlotte and went to Holman and Moody's, and we walked in that place, and I'm like, oh my gosh, man, even at nine years old, you're like, this Blue place way. is freaking amazing. You know, we had this building, and then added this building, and then added this building, and then you go to Holman and Moody, and they got uh, European sports cars. They got Pearson's gold and blue, number 17. You know, I mean, they got all this stuff, you know, and it's just like, I've never seen anything like that. So to go to another shop was a big deal. Yeah. But to have people come to your shop was really cool as a kid. Yeah. I, I, let me tell you one more thing. Joe Milliken, uh, when I was in elementary school, he drove our school bus. Uh, he was my school bus driver. <laughs> yeah. I, that, we, we had the only. That was, that we, was his racing that, experience. Yeah, we bus. had the only Holy flat nose. Remember, because we lived up there on that end of the county, and they picked up more kids. So the biggest bus in the county was at our end, and Joe drove, drove, Joe drove the school bus. Is so that I, how he was introduced to the family? No, no, no. They're, but they're, 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 they're all kin. They're, they're all kind of halfway kin. Yeah. Okay. Every, everybody's kin in some way, shape, or form up there in Level Cross. That's wild. Dalton, did you know that Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers in the U.S.? Not until now. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm here to tell you. Uh, they have everything that you could possibly want, like fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, houseplants, and so much more. Whatever you're interested in, they have it for you. Find the perfect fit for your climate and space. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online. Your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. Uh, And along with their 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee, they offer free plant consultation forever. You know, it's nice because I'm a new homeowner, and so I don't have to worry about talking to a landscaper, having them charge me a bunch of money. I can get my trees directly from Fast Growing Trees for any yard project I want to work on. There you go. This spring, they have the best deals online, up to half off on select plants and other deals. And listeners to our show get an additional 15% off their first purchase when using the code Dale Jr. FastGrowingTrees.com, code Dale Jr. Offer is valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions may apply. We've I've had this kind of had this conversation with both of you at different times, but Kyle wants to race. Um, you know, you've 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 kind of kept him in check, and now here he comes to you and yeah. he says, "I want to do this." Well, what happened was he kept coming wanting to race, and I said, "No." I was twenty one before my dad let me race. Right. And Kyle turned eighteen, <clears throat> but what he'd done, uh, he messed around and talked to. Some boys in the shop I said, if I talk dead in, will y'all help me work on this yeah. race car? So I said, one day he come in and said, I want to do this. I said, go talk to your mother. If she okays it, you know, it'll be all right. So uh, I think he finally somehow or another convinced his mother to let him drive. Yeah, yeah. I promised and her I'd go to night school, remember? Sounds like that, yeah. that mom was really Going to the night one. school? Night school. I promised her okay. I'd go to night school, okay. remember? I'll tell you that. 
he he promised to go to night school. That's why. The, so that's, that's why night school. What was the day school? No, no, no. Because she wanted me to go to school. Right. But I didn't want to go to school. Were you going to quit school? I, I hadn't planned on quitting school. I was going to night school. Um, no, so I told her, he already, this shop, was this like a bachelor's graduated. degree? Yeah. I, I, man, I, I, I never got you're that far. Of, Let me just say it never I'm just got saying, that far. You're out of high school. Out of high school. Right, this is gonna so I'm, going to, I'm going to Asheboro to a, to a business yeah. college. Going, so to, going to a business that was college the same at night school. Yeah. Like do, going, a little, do something. Do something school. Yeah, do something. And I'll do it. That's I'll it. help you. That's what I did. Yeah. That's same thing. Same thing. If you'll go to school, you can do there this. And this is what happened. And, you know, he'd work all day at the shop. Awesome. You know, he'd have yep. paint on him or yeah. grease. and Dirt, yeah. Then he'd go to school. Well, after third or fourth time that he went down there, uh, the guy that was running the school called and said, don't bring him back. We'll give you your money back. Because <laughs> he's going down there. They smelled him. <laughs> I was a stinky kid. Oh, Jesus. Because he stinky. beat grease all over. I smelled like gas. Him. I smelled like yeah. lacquer thinner. They, I had they Bondo don't go to school. I went down there one time. I had Bondo. You know how you, when you, you're just white with Bondo dust. <laughs> what and were you going to school for? Just whatever? I was, at that just... time, I was that, my first couple of classes were math um, and something else. It was something. It was some kind of business. Yeah. So it was just like, just I don't have to class. clean up to go. I just, I'm getting there on time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get my homework. I was doing my stuff. But I was a stinky that kid. That didn't so last didn't. long. No. <laughs> three, three or four days. Three or four days. Three, three, cu- a couple of weeks. Two or couple, three weeks. Yeah. yeah, it asked uh, two or three. And, and they gave my mom her, and she never said anything. No. no. she never. I mean, she said, okay, just go try it. And I said, if it doesn't, if I don't like it, if I don't like it, then I'll go to school. So I, you, I promised her if I didn't like it. Did you drive, did you take this car and test? Yeah, we went to Daytona. Yep. We went to Daytona. And so we went to Daytona. Kenny Roberts was there. Remember, yeah, he was. Right, the they were tire testing motorcycles. They used to run in motorcycles. Yeah, they were tire testing <laughs> motorcycle tires when and we were there. Did you take your car? No, we, t- we took, just, just took one. his just car. His. Just one. Yeah. You drove it. He yeah, drove it. he drove I, it. I went out and ran it. You know, make sure everything yeah. was working good. Put him in the car. <laughs> Said, "Okay, this is where you're supposed to be." You know, big bump coming off a of four at that time. You drove around the right track with him riding in be, it? Yeah. Yeah, him, him yeah. riding in the we How were, fast? 193. Bull yeah. No, seriously. I, I got in. I had, we, run I, 190, I, we run 193 with him driving. Hey, what did we run with Terry down there with my brother-in-law? 196. Run 196 with my brother-in-law on the right side of the car a few years later. Just sitting and holding on. I was on a <laughs> I was on a car cover. Right, strap. You strap yourself <laughs> no, to nothing. I was, I was I'm not strapped. I was strapped in. Had my he's helmet. strapped in. <laughs> Listen, I just wanted to drive. Dude. I know that. <laughs> I know this happened. I know yeah. it really did happen. Yeah. And I mean, this is one of those things, kind of like with the kids. I I would get in the car today, and I'm like, buckle, 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 yeah. buckle, yeah. tight, yeah. tight. Yeah. Is this tight? And Amy's like, is this necessary? I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been in a few wrecks. Yeah. But. Boy, I was I was laying down sleeping in the back of my mom's Monte Carlo That's riding right. around That's when right. I was a, you know six years old. That's right. Same thing. Same no seatbelts so, at all. So we, we jumped in. I jumped in the right side, um, put the car cover in, jumped in the right side. He got in, bolted in. We went out and run, like he said. The whole time he's driving, he's pointing yeah. and saying, "There's a bump. Used to be a bump here, but they they just repaved it. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And they just repaved it. Used to be a big bump here. It's not as bad now. It's more of a swell. And he'd talk about all this stuff. And was there? Again. All right. Now no. Sh- like I, I can imagine you. You're of course you're going to get in the car with your dad, go do this. Yeah. And I and, and I get that. But in the is, can you admit, in the back of your mind there was some fear. So I'll say this with him, no. Really. No. Because man, I'd say, so I want you to think about this, I, and and you would have been the same way. You've seen him do it so many times. I know, there but is I'd no still fear. Be I still would. The experience alone is scary, regardless of who's listen, driving. Listen, I, listen. After it. after after eighteen years, yeah. I was here, You're done, and he was here. I was this freaking close. Yes. You know what I mean? Okay. I was this freaking close to it. sitting right there. Yes. So it's like I'm not. Uh, this is what it takes. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. And 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 it was good. The 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 scary part was, or not the scary part, the apprehension of going out by yourself yeah. was the deal. Yeah. You know, and, and what's this thing going to do now, now that I'm hanging on to it? Yeah. yeah. It's he like having been, your flight. He's never been around a race track. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like Richard having your flight. Richard didn't climb on the car cover and ride in the <laughs> no, passenger no, seat. No, no, he, he wasn't going out with me. <laughs> he wasn't going out. But, I mean, that was the apprehension, yeah. you know what I mean, of, of, of am I going to be able to turn this thing when I get it down there? What's yeah. it going to do, man? You All know right. what I mean? What's yeah. it, what? Well, I have no clue, dude. I mean, first was time I barrel open. You know what? I don't. I, 
It wasn't easy or hard. It was just so freaking different Foreign. than anything God, you have you ever never experienced. never raced. Never. Nothing. Never. I never drove off in the first corner at, at Caraway or anywhere, man. I never thought. So it, you just, it was just so so far how, out there you didn't think about how it. did you run that race and not crash into something <laughs> that's a good well, question he was out they were crashing out of my way <laughs> all right <laughs> as i would get to them they would crash you know what like, I, I have it, no I, idea i me and every other driver is going to get into that situation and run into something yeah right screw there's something we're going to do so so here's you know honestly and and I, I say this there was um um ron hutchison Him. dick's dick's brother um billy hagan um, Rezac and Phil Finney. There's a guy named Phil Finney. His his nephew was um was um an official for a while. And Phil had had the best car. Yeah, he had the best car. He they had a um, something happened. Their windshield caved in. Hit a seagull. I don't know. I, I don't know the whole story. I, sure. I talked to Phil the other day. I saw him at Daytona. Uh, but he had the best car. But it came down to me and uh, was it Rezac? Or Brevac, like, whatever his name was. Bob Brevac. Yeah. So it came down to us at the end of the race, and man, they were fast. Man, you got you got to go back and look at these Luminas and and how these things are. I mean, they're bad, but Batmobile looking yeah. things because you could run anything in Arca. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, you know, and he, I I ended up beating him back by. Did you pass on them? No, we were. You were just out. We front? were racing. Yeah. You no, know, we'd race back and forth. He'd pass. We'd pass. But but he was on the outside. We came across the line. Close. Side by side. Horse yeah. Yeah, because it, 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 you didn't just beat him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you had to race for it. So, so it was it was just. What, you're you're in this race when the car gets loose the first time, right? Or when, You know what? Did any of that happen? It, did you have these moments it never, where you're it, like. It never got bad loose. Yeah. It no, never it never got bad loose. Okay. They just done, re, done the racetrack. They just repaved it. It had yeah. a lot of grip. It, it, had, it, it did have good grip. That's right. It had good grip. And it just repaved it, and they had to yeah. come with a different tire. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, they had to come, because they were down there. So it had good grip, and it wouldn't ever get loose in the sense of, of what you think of a car right. or people think of a car getting loose today, yeah. or what they would get loose. Sure. You know what I mean? Because they were, that was a different deal. Um, but it was. So it's fascinating. It, yeah. It was, you just, you know, the, the fascinating part was to understand, to learn the closure rate. Yeah. You know what I mean? To learn how fast you were catching some of these guys that were running 15 miles Very an hour slow. slower. Yes. You know what I mean? And how the draft would just jingle up, man. I mean, yeah, because all of a sudden you're here and you come off and there's a couple of cars and it jingles up and all of a sudden you're in turn three and you're like, hell, I'm 10 mile an hour faster than I've ever gone in here. How am I going to turn <laughs> this thing now? You know what I mean? I mean, there, there were those little things. Yeah. And and that was, that was the thing. Spending... We spent two or three days. We spent three days spending three days down there by yourself, just running and running. You, that helped you begin, a bunch, That right? helped a yeah. ton. Keep forgetting about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we process. could. Yeah, so yes. we could. So we were just there because, like I said, the only other person there was Kenny Roberts on a, on a motorcycle. And they go out and run, then they give the oval to us, and then we go out and run and back and forth. So, it, so it's bizarre. It, it is, is a bizarre way to start. I'm not going to say it's not. You win the race. Um, you pull into victory lane. Um, what do you remember about your thoughts as that all happened in front of you? You know, I don't know if I had any feelings or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I know <clears throat> Kyle qualified second. Okay. So before the race started, I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. You've never been in a race. I want you to sort of take off with them and then drop back and let them guys and watch and see how they drive and all that stuff. So the green flag, he come by leading the dang race. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> he didn't pay I know, any. I just ran up so through the gears. From man. then on, there was no need of giving him any instructions sure. so he never paid attention. Yeah. But when the race was over and stuff, naturally we we tickled to death because we had, we had run that car the year before and finally had to quit running it because we couldn't yeah. couldn't win anything yeah. with it. And, uh, but Found the car was really it. good. Yeah. It's it a was good car. Good at Daytona. Yeah, but just getting out of the deal or going up there and seeing him and stuff. Uh, I don't know. If, I think he was thrilled more than I was. Yeah. What I was thrilled about, he ran the whole race and hadn't hit anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I was looking for. Yeah. When you got out of the car, who were you excited to see first? Them, him, and Mama. And what did um, you? Um, and and Granddad. You see, they were all there. My grandma <laughs> was there, and and that we're back to seventy-five years. You know what I mean? I know. And and. I, you know, I don't. I didn't expect to win a race. Sure. Yeah. You know, you. I want to know. That's not you, a race. That, that's. Do you, what do you? What do you think you said? No idea. Damn. No idea. I was eighteen, man. Did you? I just I tickled. Know. 
is to be in a race car. Ten minutes, <laughs> five minutes later, ten minutes later, standing there getting your picture made it. with the trophy. Did you look at him and go? No, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that it had played out the way yeah. it played out. You know what I mean? I mean, you you couldn't and and couldn't believe. So seven days later, he's standing in victory lane. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's the same thing. You're in the pits I'm the tire guy. Tires. I'm the tire guy that day. You know yeah. what I mean? So you're back to doing your job. You know yeah. what I mean? I remember <laughs> I was doing the research for the 79 stuff I was trying to do, and they interview you during the race, yeah. and you're like, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, they that's were like, right. Yeah. We're here for something else right now. We're here for <laughs> it's another race. That's yeah, a week ago. That was man. last week. Yeah. That's last week, he, man. That's old he's news. Like, I'm, I'm working on these tires. I'm working on tires, dude. That's what you do <laughs> because that's what it was, yeah. you know. And and it, it was crazy. It, 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 so this is the fascinating part, okay? So we talk about, to me, this is the fascinating part. So it's like, we go to Daytona and you run a race and then they're like, let's run five cup races. Yeah. I've run one race. Right. One race. Yeah, you get excited. So then we go to, uh, we go to Michigan, Atlanta, Talladega. Charlotte. Charlotte and Ontario. So I run those. So at the end of my first full season of driving, mm-hmm. I had run basically six races and nothing smaller than a mile and a half. Right. You know what I mean? I was a cup driver, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, to thinking about those emotions of that first race, the, yeah. the win, and, and, and how you, the dynamic between father and son and shift to Adam. Yeah. Right? When he starts <laughs> racing in ARCA and he's going to go make his first cup start at Texas, right? Yeah. Right. Um, you are different as a yeah. dad oh, yeah. in that moment versus him. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Different. Oh, yeah. But is he now different? Because he's different. Because he's went through yeah. this. He's he's different because it's his grandson. Right. Um, I was, yeah, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure in in some respects that I'm more, I, I would be closer to what your dad, it, it's like you watch your kids and you think, man, where'd they learn that? Yeah. How'd they learn to do that? Right. Where'd that come from? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And and it was the same way when I started driving, it, there was things that happened that I just felt like I already knew. Yes. Because I've been going to the racetrack since I was six years old. Right. I'd watched 10 million races. If there you know was I mean? anybody that could come yeah. into the Cup Series and just yeah. jump right in. So I had just been everywhere. And listen, I, we were talking about it the other day. I saw Dan Gurney win at Riverside when I was a little boy. You know what I mean? Because we went yeah. out there with, with him when Dan, Dan was driving that 121 car. So it's like you just had so much in here. Somehow it just came out through here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind yeah. of the, through your hands. And that's kind of the way that um, – that Adam was watching him. It was just like he had been around it so long and had gone during the summers with me and he and Austin, it just kind of came out. But you look at it, but man, to, to run, uh, when he won that ARCA race, that was that was a huge hey, deal. Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. I, I, I tell people this, and and, I, and to sidebar here, um, I, my two most favorite, my, my two greatest memories in this sport is him winning Daytona in 79 because we went down there in 79 um, and tried to test that other car and it didn't work and we put that Oldsmobile body on it. Uh, we come back and it was just me and Richie and, and Steve because we had run out of money. And he wins that race and then Adam driving the ARCA car. Um, he crashed in practice and we had to beat the rear fenders out and put another deck lid on it and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we just beat it out there in the garage area, man. And yeah. then he goes out I, and wins the race. And I, being a part of those two wins yeah, are I, my I, bit greatest wins I, right there. I was more excited. Uh, with Adam winning yeah. Charlotte than I was for yeah. him winning right. his yeah. first race. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was. Yeah. Basically, that's crazy. basically uh, I was closer to Adam than I ever was to Kyle. Yeah. Because it was I, a different time. You know I mean? Because growing up and doing things, I was so busy, yeah. I just let him be his own man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when Adam come along, I had a little more time to circulate around and – Plug into what he was doing. You mean? Yeah. So he go to ASA races with him right. and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. it was it was it's a different relationship. Yeah. So totally. That, so that's really interesting. Yeah. So I know things worked out for you and and all of that. Um, did you did do you and your dad over the last forty years <laughs> or whatever? make up for those oh yeah for that yeah for that can yeah. you know that, yeah. that sort of so it, uh, we're, we're closer now than we've ever right. been ever yeah. been yeah i mean yeah. him him yeah. seeking out yeah him sort of yeah. taking you around that was yeah that yeah. was evident to me by you coming up to me and saying hey man i want to bring dan on yeah. the show i'm like yeah. 
All right. What? Well, yeah. well, this is great. Yeah. So it, it's. I, I think you know. I, I think so. I'm. I'm. And we've talked about this before, and I've talked about it with my sisters, um, and I'll say it here. Um, so I was. There's a period of my life that I was Richard Petty's son. Okay. And then there was a period of my life that I worked for Richard Petty. And then there was a period that I was teammates with Richard Petty. And then there was a period that I went and drove somewhere else and I was a competitor. And then I gave that up and I came back and I was his business partner. We went in and, and I had a team together, you know, in, in the early 2000s. And then when all that changed and went away, then I became his son again. Damn. So it's a, it's a full, it's a, full it's a circle. circle. It's a full circle. So the respect and love that I have for him has only grown through all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you see it through so mm -hmm. many different ways. And and I will, and, and I think part of that is, and, and you can understand this, is because you got two, you have two little girls now. Mm -hmm. And, but you, I will never get to experience that with Adam. And you'll never get yeah. to experience that with your dad. Right. You know, and that's, and that's something that misses. That's a hole. Mm -hmm. That's and you can't feel that. No, hole. you can't. You know what I mean? But you can dang sure try with other ways. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's all that's all we ask in life is yeah. just let's just keep trying. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and you know he and I are closer now. We talk. I call him every night. We talk. He answers the home phone. He don't have a cell yeah, phone, right? but he answers the home phone. <laughs> and hey, you can call him at ten thirty. I'm like, what are you doing? Eating. You call him at five thirty. What are you doing? Eating. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's watching watching. YouTube NASCAR classics on YouTube. I you know what I mean? Yeah. Watch out. Me too. Yeah, we need. To, I, I need to grab you and we'll go to the house one night. Let's watch some classics. And, and sit and watch some yeah. classics. Yeah. And, and have him do the commentary. I would oh. love that. We were watching. We were watching Darlington not long ago, um, and he's like, uh, he's like, man, I. He's watching it and he's talking about. It and he's like, I'm. I almost won this race. I think I cut a tire with four laps to go. Bigger than crap, I cut a tire with four laps yeah. to go. And I mean, it's like. Just remember oh, yeah. it, and it was like sixty one or sixty two. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like fifty years ago, sixty years ago, and yeah. he still remembers. So it's pretty cool. That sounds like me. That's what I do every just yeah. about every night. Get on the couch with the iPad, yeah. watch NASCAR classics. <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. They're good. Yeah, yeah. they are. Back, they are good. Back in the sixties, seventies, seventies was really, really good. Oh, yeah. yeah, you mean if I could, they got good stuff there. If I if I could just snap my fingers and put myself in the garage area of any NASCAR race, uh, the era I would choose is probably 79, 78, yeah. 77, yeah. 76. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, that right little through there. That little chunk, man. Yeah, yeah right through, and I'm going to tell you, man, right through there, 74, 75, 76. That's when it was really with competitive, him, for sure. Yeah, with him and then Kale in that Oldsmobile. Because you had that little group that come through, and all the group that I came through, all them guys won 80 races. Yeah, yeah. You go to yeah. a group now. That's crazy. The guy's won 15, 20 races. He's a winner. Yeah. Which he still is. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, for sure. But that era is so much different. Yeah. So it's there's crazy. no way to compare what we did with what they're doing today or what my dad done. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, man, I know you guys got a hard out. It is a wrap. It's time for us to have to wrap up. Uh, our conversation is as is, is tough as that's I thought be. you just got started. I know it. I know it. <laughs> we got 75 more years, I man. I know. <laughs> I could do this every week with y'all. Um, I just want to say, man, I, um, uh, I appreciate you, Kyle. You're, you're, no. you're just getting to know you over the last several years working at NBC and stuff. I've really enjoyed that. And, um, and I appreciate who you are and I appreciate how, th how passionate you are about things. I appreciate what you're doing with your yeah. dad and um you're putting a lot of effort your own efforts behind celebrating yeah. the 75 yeah. years um and that's just a great thing to see you're setting such a great example as a son uh and trying to carry you know trying to share with people and celebrate that name and history um so i appreciate that about you um the king i mean i love the king he is he is the man uh, we talked about the autograph sessions and, and sitting out there and making sure everybody uh, got an autograph yeah. after all the races back in yeah. the 70s and the 80s. And you set the standard uh, for all the drivers to, of how to be and how to act yeah. and how to engage in and outside the race car. Yeah. Um, your, the, your, your value and the asset you are to this industry is immeasurable. It really is. It's impossible for people to to understand and i think it's great for kyle to be yeah. 
uh, sharing with people your yeah. legacy. I just been legacy. here. I just been here so long. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's important. Yeah, you know, I knew it. I knew. I remember you being the standard and thinking, "I got to do that because that's what he did," and I really didn't. You know, and 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 I think that that's important for this generation to connect yeah. with that. Um, that'll serve them well because you served you served my generation very well. Um, for the example you set, but I appreciate y'all coming today and sharing with us. So much fun talking Thank about you, all those all those old stories. Um, I know we could sit here another five five six hours and keep on doing. <laughs> still not catch up. Still sure. not catch up. I appreciate up. you, man. Thank you yes, for sir. having us. Thank appreciate you. It. Thank you for having us, man. Yes, sir. Kyle and Richard Petty on the Dale Junior Download. The Dale Junior Download is sponsored by Better Help. Dalton, how's your uh, social battery right now? Could be better. Not going to lie about that. It's been a busy couple weeks. Yeah, busy. You know, it can be draining after some of these days. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, hey, therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life so it doesn't drain that battery we've been talking about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to therapy, and one of those is that I have a place to kind of make sense of some of my thoughts so that I have more time to dedicate to recharging that social battery. Yeah, absolutely. I've given it a try. Uh, it's been super helpful for me. I think you've tried it too. Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, yeah, so if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, especially with the busy work schedule that we've got. That helps. Uh, just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Dale Jr. today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Dale Jr. All right, man. That was an awesome conversation with Kyle and Richard Petty. Left me this hat autographed by the king. I think anytime you get this autograph here, uh, you got you a cool little piece of memorabilia. Uh... I looked at the. I had a sh had sheets of notes for uh, Kyle and Richard. Didn't even look at them. I knew last night when I was coming in here today that Kyle was Kyle's a, Kyle's going to go. You just ask the question and you're going to go somewhere for about 15 minutes. I don't know if y'all enjoyed all the stories, but I sure did. And I like to know. Uh, you know, I'd love to be able to talk to them about the father-son dynamic, and, and I've always been curious about that because, you know, Richard Petty's a, an icon, and we build him up to be this certain thing, and, and then we never think about what type of father he might have been. So it's interesting to ask them about what it must have been like to come home from school uh, with a bad grade or, or, or being, you know, have some sort of discipline coming your way, what kind of, what would you expect from the king? <laughs> I know dad was intimidating. He was scary. Um, so it was interesting to, to learn that. But, um, then, uh, you know, how we take that forward to Adam and watching Kyle through that process of Adam becoming this race car driver and getting to that first cup start at Texas and how in love with all of that Kyle was. Kyle was right there just beaming. And even Richard had a look upon him, a, a glow, if you will, during that process that wasn't really there with, with Kyle. So... I don't know, man. It's pretty cool to be able to talk to those guys about these kind of personal things. They always get asked about racing and racing and, and racing. And so it's kind of fun to talk to them. I'd always seen that Lee Petty car, that mangled up, balled up piece of metal that flipped down the back you know, down the banking at, at Daytona back in 61. I see that at the museum. You can look at Google a picture of it online right now and see what this car looks like today. And I'd always been like, oh, that's such a cool piece of memorabilia. That's such a cool thing that still exists. I can't believe that's that's still around, right? But maybe they don't think it's that cool because <laughs> it was a dark day, right? Um, anyhow, it's fun to talk to them about that and all the other things and really enjoy that. I swear you could bring Kyle and 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 Richard in here multiple times throughout the year and have – have really great shows um so thank you want to want to thank ally for bringing us the guest segment um 
I talked about it with Kyle. He's became a friend. You know, I knew Kyle forever, right? But I don't know that I could call him a friend up until we started working together at NBC and just getting to know really who he is, the person he is, um, has been so fun for me. And um, so thank you, Ally, for bringing in these al- these allies in, into the room. Um, no matter what you're saving for, if it's uh, tickets to the next race, a new car, a new home, Ally is going to serve you right. We're all better off with an Ally. So thank you. It's time for the white flag. All right, so um, we covered it yesterday, but just in case you haven't heard that episode, on Monday, the teardown dropped with Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi. Jeff Gluck goes on a terrific rant about his frustrations over what he saw this past weekend at Martinsville. He feels bad about it. Maybe go give him a little hug, pat him on the back. Watch the rant. Tell him what you think. Action's detrimental with Denny Hamlin. Also, Denny's take on short track racing, the state of the sport, and so forth. Um, some critical, uh, even though, you know, Denny's, Denny's a wild man um, and, and can, be, can get pretty animated, uh, there's some good information coming from Denny. Um, there's a lot of narratives around how to fix the short track package, and I think everybody's got a little hint of an answer in their comments, as does Denny. Door up or clear, those guys hammer it every week. Uh, the spotters go after a lot of topics going on in the sport and um, always a kind of a fun fun listen. A lot of good information in there too, but uh, they're always giving each other a hard time. It's always fun to drop in and be a part of that show. Yesterday, our Dirty Air show, that's out now. Um, we had fun. We had uh, William Byron calling in the winner of the race. We had Sammy Smith here with a sundrop announcement. And... Uh, and we gave, uh, you know, we gave our opinion about what we saw this past weekend at Martinsville. Speed Street with Connor Daly drops today with Chase Holden. And there's a lot of things going on in the in-car world and Connor's world, as a matter of fact. So you want to get updated on everything happening there. And dropping Friday, uh, you usually get Dirty Mode Do on, fr- on Thursdays. This week, it's Friday. See, the tar's busy on Thursday. Dude has a life, unfortunately. Uh, Dirty Mo Doe will have to wait a day. But he's going to give you his preview of Texas. Um, so that'll be pretty uh, fun. And also the Masters, big big golf tournament that Steve is in love with. Got to hear what he's got to say about what he thinks is going to go on down at the Masters. DJD Reloaded comes out every Thursday. Carla and my sister had a uh, stacked lineup of drivers on the show last week. Mark Martin, Michael Walter, Boston Cendrick. They all talked about their first starts in NASCAR. It's a great show. Every week, this show has had tons of variety. Carla's done an amazing job taking ownership of this show. And uh, I really enjoy not only listening to the full DJD Reloaded, but the clips you guys are pushing out here at Dirty Mo Media. Um, it's a fun show to listen to. So um, that's, that's what we got going on this week. And um, looking forward to the race weekend. I'm going to Jacksonville, North Carolina to race uh, the Cars Tour Late Mile Stocks. Uh, that's going to be a tall order, but I am really looking forward to it. We'll see you.